Candice Sutherland, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. Now, the attention of the whole world was focused on Ashley Madison. It's really an infamous cheating site, really, where um, married people can go on and have an illicit affair online. But I think the thing that was most striking about this was that of the 37 million global subscribers on this network, their personal information was hacked and essentially leaked. Now, in addition to their love lives and perhaps even the sordid details of their relationships, sensitive information like bank details and, um, and credit card information was also leaked. Of course, this is highly problematic. So the Ashley Madison hack is a really interesting situation. Um, like you said, their slogan is life is short, have an effect. And if you're going to have such a controversial line of business, expect to upset some people. So in this particular hack, 37 million users um, actually belong to Ashley Madison's site. And a group of hackers called the Impact Team have managed to get their hands on this database. And they have said, if you do not delete the site completely, they will release all that information. So you have 37 million users that have used pseudonyms, you know, and created fake um, email accounts so they can get their notifications. But the reality is they use their real credit card details to pay for that subscription. So they know who the real people are behind the fake pseudonyms and, and they are threatening to release their bank details, their personal details, um, residential addresses, the illicit chats that they've had and and 37 upset clients is a lot of people um, and, and the reality is Impact Team have said if Ashley Madison doesn't shut down a site completely, they will release that, that information. And this is a 200 million US dollar company that we're talking about being held to ransom. I think so many South African business owners who are looking at the situation think, well, perhaps my company isn't infamous, perhaps the information that I've got stored on my database online isn't sordid, but it's certainly sensitive. Many businesses in South Africa deal with confidential information of their clients and of their business, and I think this is a big fright and certainly a wake-up call to many businesses. Absolutely. The unfortunate reality in South Africa is that a lot of business owners say, oh, well, it won't happen to me. I'm the SME down the road. And the reality is our legislation currently states if you are breached, you do not need to publicize it. And we don't really have any legislation protecting us from cyber criminals per se. And that just makes it so much easier to hack somebody in South Africa because there really isn't anything that's, that's going to come of it. So assuming that because you're a small company uh, and that you won't be a target is is really unrealistic because it's so much easier to hack an SME than it is to hack one of the four major banks, for example, because of the security that they have. Candice, what can business owners do to mitigate their risks of being the victims of cybercrime? There, there are a number of things you can do to protect yourself, but the reality is exactly like house robberies. You can have 12-foot walls and 15 Rottweilers. If somebody wants to get in, they will. And it's the same with your IT security. You cannot have a system that is 100% um, impenetrable. So the only way to really safeguard yourself is to have a cyber insurance policy. Because if your clients and your shareholders find out that you have been breached and they abandon ship, what do you do? You know, how do you put a price on reputation? Where a cyber insurance policy will cover all of the costs associated with a breach, as well as the reputation damage, you know, a PR company trying to help you get back on your feet. And, and that is the biggest risk actually to a company is what do you do when your clients find out you've been breached and they don't want to use your services anymore? Mm, absolutely. Now, you've mentioned what companies can do um, to try and help themselves after, after the fact. Um, but what do you say to the business owner who sits across the table from you and says, Candice, this has happened to me. Um, I haven't been properly insured. How do I make sure that um, I mitigate some of this risk? And how do I make sure it doesn't happen again? Or if it does happen again, what should I be doing? Absolutely. So very basic IT security. When you're typing in an address bar, um, 
any sort of website address. Rather type it in, in full than going to Google and searching for APSA, for example. Make sure that you type it out in your address bar. If it is the HTTPS site, make sure that the web address bar actually has that in. You know, there's ways you can safeguard yourself by having a good password policy, by having antivirus in your systems, having somebody that's actually monitoring your firewalls and your networks to make sure if somebody is sitting on your system, because what statistics show us is that um, viruses rename themselves literally every 16 hours. So by the time they're ready to launch, your firewall doesn't pick it up and your IT um, you know, won't even know that that virus is on there. And particularly with the Ashley Madison hack, you know, this didn't happen in a day. These, the impact team have been working for years and years and years to try and get this database. So someone could be sitting on your system stealing little pieces of information and you have no idea. So it's important to have a good, competent IT um, company behind you. Have your firewalls, have your antivirus, make sure that those are up to date. Make sure that you have a good password policy. Make sure that your employees understand the danger of clicking on links and opening attachments that they shouldn't be. And always type in the address bar what the actual physical address is. Candace, thank you so much for speaking to us today. Thank you for your time.